This is very, very, very simple. You can all make this fabulous, beautiful custard pie. Stay tuned, I'll show you how to make it. You can really make this. Anybody can make this, okay? This is really, really simple. If you like the recipe, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to ring the bell and give us a thumb up. Okay, friends, I'm gonna show you how to make that clafouti, cherry cla custard pie. This has gotta be one of the easiest dessert in the world, okay? I promise you, folks, everybody can make this dessert exactly the same way I did it. I promise you, okay? I did it one day on the Today Show in like four minutes. So I know you can do it. I'm going to take my time today because at the Today Show, you don't have time to explain anything. You just do it. And um, so, very simple. You need a blender. You need a pie mold, a lasagna pan, and a bunch of ingredients. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare my pie pan. All I'm going to do is, uh, is uh, put a long non-stick spray in there, right? It looks like a lot, but it's not. <laughs> uh, we're going to take it right there, and we're going to put it in a lasagna pan big enough to hold the whole thing. Now we're going to make the custard pie. We're getting fresh cherries because fresh cherries are in season right now. You can't get fresh cherries? Don't worry. You can get good dark peated black cherries in syrup in a can. They, they're delicious. They're nice and firm. You can get them frozen. Not quite the same, but you can. If you don't have cherries, uh, you can make them with apricot. Cut the apricot in half. Remove the pits. They can zero hard. Remove the pits and put the cut side in the bottom of the, of the pie and make exactly the same custard. Okay? Uh, 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 blackberries, no, no, not blackberries, uh, um, blueberries, they gotta be a firm fruit, you can't do it with raspberry because they kind of fall apart, you know, so blueberry works, apricot works, pear, if you have nice ripe pear, those work great, cut them in half, remove the seeds, put them cut side down also, where the pointy part goes in the middle in the pan, and that also is a beautiful uh, pear clafouti. It's called clafouti. So now, we got the pits. You want to remove the pits. I got to tell you a story. <laughs> I'm always telling you a story. By the way, you, you, tell, you need a, a, a cherry pitters for this. You see, look, look. You take your cherry, right? You put it right in here. And then you, boom, remove, <laughs> remove the pit. Look, look, I do it again. It's very cool. It's like a gun. Oh, this is not a very nice one. So you got to go through them, right? So you take it right there. That's not a nice one. What the hell is going on? Look at that's not a nice one either. I got a bunch of rotten cherries. So here we go. Look, take it right there, right? And bam. <laughs> I don't know where it went. It went out there somewhere. All right, so you do this. Get all the pits out. Now, I got to tell you something, a funny story, right? When we were kids, my mom was a cordon bleu chef, so my mom was always making fabulous dessert. And we, I live in Provence. I grew up in the south of France in Provence in a small village called the Toronet. And uh, it's, in, it's uh, next to Aix-en-Provence, uh, next to Marseille, when it's in the south of France, right? And, um, and we had a big black cherry tree. And my mom, in, 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 in this time of the year, when the big cherries would come out, big black cherry tree, she would make us a cherry clafouti. And we were five kids, and, and she barely had time to cook it, barely had time to cool it. We would swallow the whole thing, and she would say, you kids don't appreciate nothing. You don't even eat it, you swallow it. That's what kids do, you swallow the whole thing. She said, I gotta slow them down. So she figured out, she said, I'm gonna leave the pit in there. So we would eat it, she said, be careful, there's pits in there. And sure enough, there was a bunch of pits in there. You know what? We loved eating it so much more with a pit. Not because the pit tastes like anything, they don't taste like anything, right? They really don't taste like anything, but you, they, you keep it in your mouth longer. Because remember, the test buds are on the tongue and in the water of your mouth. By the time you swallow the food, it's all over, you don't taste it anymore. You have to keep it in your mouth. That's why when you have wine or, or olive oil, you, you want to taste, you keep it in your mouth for a while. Well, same deal. So if you have kids that eat too fast, and you're making this, keep a few pits in there. Or you know what I tell everybody do? I remove the pit, but every so often you miss one. So you tell them, no matter what, be careful, there's pits in there. Then they don't believe you. So we sprayed, right? We sprayed the mold. So now we put the cherries in there, right? Put enough to fill up the whole thing. You, you fill up the whole bottom for sure, for sure. And, and then put a little bit extra. Okay, not too many extra, otherwise you're not going to have room for your custard, right? Just like that. 
Put your fruit in the bottom. And now we're going to make the custard. If you cannot do this dessert, you have an issue, okay? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it is an issue. So look, this is very simple. Five eggs. All uh, right. A cup and a half and a half. A cup of cream. If you don't have half and half, they use milk. It works with milk also. It really does work with milk, right? right. Oh, let me take those out. Then a, a, a cup, a cup and a quarter of sugar. Depends how sweet your cherries are. Very sweet, you know. Cup of flour. I always like to put a pinch of salt, remember. You're begging a pinch of salt, you're not going to test it. It's just going to be in there, it's going to help. A, a little bit of vanilla, I like to use, to use Tahitian vanilla. <whistles> measure carefully. About a tablespoon and a half of, uh, uh, not that you're going to measure. Don't take the spoon and put it in there, you know. And, uh, and then you, you start your machine, and then you're going to puree this. Don't puree it too long. Let me tell you why you don't want to puree too long. If you puree it too long, you're going to create a lot of air bubble in there. And if you create air bubble, it's going to rise. And like anything that rises, eventually it comes down. Well, that's what's going to happen. It is going to come down, folks. So here it is. Right there. All we're going to do is we're going to take this mixture and we're going to pour it in here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this in here. Don't create too many air bubbles. You create too many air bubbles. It's going to rise up and up and up. Then it's going to fall down. And when it falls down, it doesn't look really pretty, friends. So here we have it. Here we have it, here we have it, here we have it right there. Let's make sure it's completely submerged. And then we're going to put a water bath. We're going to put them in a water bath. You see, look, at this recipe fits perfect, the whole mold right there. Right? And then what I do is I take a fork or a spoon and I submerge everything. And we're just going to bake it just like that, friends. And let me tell you, this is a fabulous... Then I take hot water, hot, hot, hot water, hot water, hot water, and I pour it in here, right there, and about halfway, and we're going to pop it in the oven, and we're going to bake them for about an hour at low, low temperature, 250 temperature, very low temperature. Let me open up my oven, so by the time I get there, I don't have to worry about it, oh. Oh man, this is full. Holy mug. It's a good thing I'm not drinking. I'm going to put them in there just like this. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, I did it with that. With that screwing up. I'm not that good with that kind of stuff. Here we go. We're going to bake them. Remember, when you bake a custard, you want to do it at a low temperature for a long time. You don't want the custard to boil. You don't want the water to boil. You certainly don't want the custard to boil. Otherwise, it creates air bubble. So we're going to take them out of the oven and we'll get back to you in about an hour from now. Okay, well, I left it in the refrigerator overnight. After all, I think it's better if you leave it there. Four or five hours may not be quite enough unless your fridge is really, really cold. Do it overnight, you're good. At this point, I want to unmold it. Now, remember, we did put a little nonstick spray in here. And uh, if you did enough of it, you'll see then it's not really attached to the side. You don't really need a knife to do it. You shouldn't need a knife to do it. But I tell you what, I have a trick. I take some hot water right there, and I put it in there just for a minute. What that's going to do, that's going to help us unmold it, okay? Just a little bit of hot water. Same lasagna pan that we cooked it in. Remember, we'll cook this in, in, in a water bath, right? Same deal, just to get that, lasagna, that, that pan just a little hot. And it should come out pretty easy. Just make sure you have some really, really hot water in there. And what we're going to do, we're going to take it out. Now, sometimes it comes out really easy and sometimes not so easy. Eh? So let's say today, hopefully, it's going to be an easy one, right? I just take it out of there. Deliver it in there long enough. Don't be afraid. Then your, your lasagna pan, I mean, your pie pan has to be a little warm, okay, when you do it. Dry it out so you don't have to deal with all that water, right? Dry it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a large plate, I'm going to put it on top, and I'm going to do one of those, 
and hopefully it'll come out. I'm gonna grab it by the ears, right? And I'm gonna flip it. I'm not gonna flip it, I'm just gonna just put it upside down, okay? And now at this point, you can do one of those or, and that's not helping, okay? Or you can take a knife. I obviously didn't leave it long enough, it's still cold, but you know, I don't know if you can see, I don't know if you guys can see right here, but you see right there, right there, right there, look, look. It's, it's, uh, it's co coming loose. Can you see it? Can you see it right there? Can you see it right there? Look, it's coming loose. You see? Oh, look, boom. I didn't have to do a thing. So, but no, otherwise, here's what you do. You take a knife and you give it a little air pocket. That's all it needs, just a little air pocket in there. And look right there, okay? So no, we're looking good. We're looking good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it like this. Okay, two play, right? Very simple, eh? Whoop. Voila, and voila, a little bit here, but no big deal. Now we're going to take some powdered sugar, just a little bit of powdered sugar. You don't need a lot now. Don't go out there and, and, and put too much powdered sugar so you can't see the cherries anymore, right? Just a little bit of powdered sugar. Oh, yeah, baby. Just check it out, right? Very simple. Yeah, I'm saying don't put too much powdered sugar, and here I am putting like a quarter pound of powdered sugar. And then you get some beautiful cherries, and you, you have it right there. This is very simple, friends. Don't make it too complicated. Right there. Uh, you can put a little amount of cherries right there. Here you go, friends. We got a beautiful cherry clafouti. Very simple. Let me tell you. Leave a few pits for the kids so they don't eat it too fast and they appreciate it. You can make this. It's very simple. Don't forget to subscribe, folks, so you can get my other recipe coming up. Make that recipe. You're going to love it.